Hi, Angela. Um, great Hello. to talk to you. Angela's from um, High Tea with Mrs Wu, in, um, based in Newcastle in New South Wales. So, um, Angela, how are you feeling and coping at this time of change? Oh, my gosh. We are feeling pretty overwhelmed. Um, obviously, this is pretty huge in terms of health. Um, but I think, you know, we feel very lucky actually that we are in Australia. Like we have our family in Malaysia and Singapore. We know people who are currently in, in Italy and in America and in, in New York, in Japan, and it's really full on. Um, and here we are, we have a welfare system. We have an incredible health system and we are going to, we're going to get through this together. Mm, that's a great attitude. Um, can you give us a little cameo of your business? Because, you know, you're self-employed and things have changed. Totally. So I'm the youngest of three sisters um, and it's a family business. So it's really just the three of us. Um, we have this you know, lovely clothing label. We have a retail store here in Newey. But um, we also travel around Australia to do uh, design markets. So that's a really integral part of our business because that's where we get to connect with people. We get to go to Sydney and Melbourne and Canberra. Um, we travel up to Brisbane to do a, a really great little pop-up at Paper Boat Press. Um, we have contacts everywhere and we get to meet people and catch up and tell stories and try on clothes. And that's the really wonderful thing about being in retail and going to market. So now straight away, all markets are canceled, obviously no public gatherings. Um, and our retail store has been closed for the last two weeks. So all we have is online to connect and it's been really, really interesting. Mm. And how are you adapting the business to cope with that no face-to-face -face contact, social distancing, uh, people sheltering? Yeah, look, everything has changed. Essentially, we, um, we f first and foremost, like personally, we have young kids. Like between the three of us, we have six children, five of which are five and under. So daycare is, is cancelled. Well, pretty much, like, you know, we should say keep them at home. Um, my daughter's in kindy, so she's at home. So essentially, I'm a homeschooling, stay-at-home mum trying to also run a creative small business that is now pretty much closed. So it is full on, but the kind of interesting thing is, you know, it makes you think on your feet. And I think for us, immediately, we just felt like we've just got to find a way to connect with, with our people, whether it's our other maker colleagues or the, the customers that we have that are incredible um, and just other people who are in the same boat as us. And so we immediately switched to a video to IGTV because we've done a few before and so we weren't uncomfortable with it, but it just meant we decided to just do it every single day as a way to feel um, connected and not isolated from everybody else. Mm -hmm. And um, what skills and life experiencing experiences are you drawing on to you know maximize this time um i think look for us we're migrants so obviously this is a really unprecedented and unique situation and it's all over the world but we are not unfamiliar with challenges um you know we we migrated when i was six jules was eight row was 10 and it was just our parents and the three of us so that was that in itself um has really made who we are like we have learned from our parents how to be really resourceful and the reason why we started sewing was because we didn't have any money so mum and dad said if you want new clothes you're just going to have to make them so mum you know taught us how to sew with basic stuff on a domestic sewing machine and we've been sewing since we were tiny and so you know being resourceful has really come in like incredibly handy um in terms of money too like our malaysian culture money is not a taboo topic like is one of the first things you talk about. Like you meet someone and they'll ask you how much, what, what do you earn? What's your income? Like it's a, it seems like a crazy question, but money has always been something that's very comfortable. And our parents have um, taught us about money from early days. And so we have found that to be really helpful because essentially our revenue streams have kind of disappeared. So we have had to really tighten up. Um, you know, we've, we've got on the phone and we've, we've called all the, the places that we have costs. Um, and so we you know, have talked to our POS people and we've talked to our, our landlord and we've talked to our FPOS um, people. You just ring around and you don't be scared. Um, you just gotta ask. And 
we have in you know, possible job keeper and job seeker uh, opportunities from the government that's going to help us stay afloat. Um, and I think just drawing on the fact that, you know, in tough times, you just have to work together. And the three of us as, as sisters and as our family, we, we're really, really close. And so we don't feel alone at all. Um, and I think you, through the IGTV and all the video too, it's like we're connected to so many more people and we're all going through the same challenges, but we can talk about it really openly. That, that's been super helpful. Mm, that's good to hear. And um, yeah, I've noticed your, your IGTV. That's how I came to be speaking to you. That's great. Oh, you were so quick out of the box on that. And um, Angela, the other thing is, I guess, has, has this um, disruption affected how you think about resources and, and, you know, waste? I'm sure you're quite resourceful ordinarily, but have you even sharpened that up? Yeah, look, I think the really interesting thing is, is like as much as this is going to be hugely devastating in terms of the loss of lives and loss of jobs and, you know, incredible um, pains are going to be felt across the world, we also feel very much like perhaps it's like a, a reset button that the world has been desperately wanting or needing. And I think as a small business or as, as any business or even as an individual, how do we kind of make the most of this time like we're all forced to stop and we're all forced to, to really think about what we're doing and for us as a business and we we're already in the sort of sustainability field and really thoughtful about waste but it's actually making us think even further and deeper and we don't want to come out of this however long this takes a couple of months time the same as we were before because then we would have missed the opportunity to change and pivot um, so for us the first thing we've decided is to try not to buy any materials because we actually don't have the money to be able to do that. But it's making us think, okay, with what we have, what can we do? And that's what we've come up with the Furoshiki, the wraps. We're making, you know, awesome um, little wallets for our mending kits. And we're going to start doing, which we've talked about doing and kind of started, but we've never had any time. But we're going to make fabrics using our offcuts. So we're going to make yardage. And that way we can make, you know, beautiful garments, but they're, going to take a lot longer to make but we're going to use the resources we already have um, because all those scraps are not waste you know they're just potential resources and they just require time and what we're getting given through this crisis is actually time mm, that's a great attitude good on you yeah, yeah we, hope, we hope so and we think that there's actually going to be a, a lot of changes in supply chains because everyone's affected in some way um, so how do you make like better decisions around your supply chain and and how do you um, manage your resources and make better systems I think is what we're going to try and do in this in this time mm. and um, so can you tell us about your sort of daily routines and strategies like particularly with um, young children I imagine it's not easy it's yeah it's pretty messy um, you know they're so small they they're not independent so essentially they're attached to us all day long <laughs> um and our partners are, are working as well so it's, we're working from home also doing zoom zoom conferences and it's really tricky but i think the main thing we're trying to do is to have um some kind of outside time like going and doing some some sort of exercise like taking the kids around the block for a little ride obviously social distancing is really important but keeping that that external that outside time um connected um, and also being really creative, like the things that we do for our business anyway is, is a creative endeavor. So now we're just applying them at home and coming up with, you know, silly, wonderful ideas. And the kids are loving it because they get all of this precious time with us and we can do all kinds of craft and we're pulling out all of the fabrics off our swatch cards and seeing what we can do. And maybe we can distribute them to other people who need, you know, something to do at home. Um, we're getting the kids, you know, learning how to sew. We're doing crazy crafts and we've even, you know, developed this thing where I've bought, um, bulk bought from a craft supplier, a whole bunch of stuff. And then I've separated them into packs and, you know, I texted out to friends and said, all right, who's up for a craft pack? And, there's 25 of them ready at my house to uh, to give out tomorrow. <laughs> so, you know, you just get creative. And the kids, I think, really um, embrace that for sure. 
Mm. And do you find it sort of soothing that process of making or, you know, being, being resourceful with your hands or is this something that happens to you every day as a matter of course? I think it's a bit of a combination because if we had, like we always say to ourselves, oh, I want to make myself something, I want to make my kids something, but you never have the time because everything is so limited and you always just go back to, okay, Mrs. We needs this and we're doing this for the business or this for the markets. So I think this whole period is hopefully going to be a bit of downtime for ourselves, for our own families, um, and also then figuring out how to expand our knowledge, like in terms of cooking, you know, we're at home more, so also experimenting with recipes and, and things that the kids can get involved in, which is really great. Um, and I think using what you have around your house as well, like, you know, you get some stuff from the garden and we've been making little houses for the bees and ripping up cardboard boxes. And I think we're going to be building some kind of dollhouse thing with, you know, intricate rooms and drawings and writing and write, oh, we're writing postcards, watercolour postcards and sending them to our friends overseas. You know, you just... You just get crafty and get creative at home as well as at work. Mm, sounds great. And so what's your, <laughs> what's your best advice then for people to get creative or see it as a gift of time or any other ideas you have? Yeah, I think we hope that, you know, everyone sort of figures out how to step back a little bit and take this moment to reflect a little bit on what has happened, but also to kind of go, what do you want this new, brave new world to look like? And how do you and your business and your family, how do you guys want to be a part of that? And not be so afraid to experiment because really anything goes right now. And so many people have said to us, oh, how did you, you know, do the whole IGTV thing and get comfortable? It's like, just first you start with a camera really far away from your face and then eventually it gets closer and you get more familiar with yourself on screen and also you just worry less because the more you do it, the, the better it'll get. And I think at this time where everyone is trying to connect, um, it doesn't have to be perfect. And I think that's the, the, the key thing that, you know, we'd like to share with everyone, just give it a go. Even if it's like some silly, crazy idea, why not? You know, this is the time where people want to, see things and hear things and try things. And, and I think this is a really good time for us to try and do that and not be so hard on ourselves for, for not getting it right the first time. Mm, that's great advice. And in the longer term, like what sort of social, cultural, economic changes do you see ahead on the other side of this? I think it's going to be pretty, um, pretty big. And whether or not it's actually people realising that their community their village is actually a lot more important than they had that thought before. Like, you know, right now we are seeing so many amazing acts of kindness and generosity and people are even like going on Zoom more often than they normally would because, well, this is the way that they're going to connect. Um, text messages and, and emails and letters. I think people realise that people are important and maybe they haven't been giving enough time to the people that they care about in their lives and this whole health crisis means that you suddenly realise, wow, like the people in my lives are the most important thing. So community connection is going to be huge. And I think hopefully in terms of business too, people are going to, to make the changes that they've always been wanting to make. And this is the time to do it. Alternatively, there is going to be a lot of businesses that close um, and that's going to be scary and really sad. But hopefully that will also change the way that perhaps their lives trajectory has has been going down and maybe something new and fresh and different will come from that um but i think sharing sharing is going to be a big part of it collaboration and sharing and working together a lot more than we have previously yeah that sounds sounds positive really doesn't it and um just to finish off can you tell us about some of the gorgeous clothes that you've got behind angela i know you work a lot with linens don't you and obviously yeah, we go. yeah look it's, it's it was interesting timing because as all of this um this the retail had to close and social distancing became the the norm we were about to launch our new autumn range and go to the conscious space this beautiful new market in sydney so all of this was already on the horizon and then of course um, things changed. So 
we've just been releasing it via this this medium of video. Um, so this is a really lovely dress. Um, just love this fabric. So it's our classic Frank dress, but in this beautiful sort of indigo blue colorway. And we keep all of the off cuts. So we'll be making all types of our furoshiki wraps and um, little wallets and lots of other things with it too. So I'm sure you'll see it pop up in all different ways as well. Mm, that's great. Well, thank you for sharing your thoughts there, Angela. It's lovely um, to connect with you remotely and yeah, you luck with it. Thank you so much. And I hope for you too, things are, are looking interesting and you're getting keeping your hands busy and lots of projects are in the pipeline. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Thanks. See you. Yeah.